Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Thursday, October 20th, 2022. And tonight, I'll be covering paranormal news. As always, you can find all the episodes of the show, along with links to social media, ways to donate, and ways to contact me at the podcast page, which is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O Paranormal. Dot podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. And um, we're getting closer to Halloween. One more week of, uh, of regular shows and then, uh, then it'll be Halloween weekend after after uh, about 10 days, 11 days, so well, I'm less than that now. But um, but yeah, looking forward to that. Like I said, I have some shows planned, and and uh, hopefully it'll be fun. So as always, I have um, shared the links to the articles I'm going to talk about in the stream chat here, the text channel, and uh, I will include them in the episode descriptions on the podcast and YouTube feeds so that you all can check them out because I always just summarize them. There's always a lot more there to check out than what I am able to talk about in one of these shows. So, um, let's see here. Um, looking at everything else, I could be a guest. Let me see here. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I misread that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Everyone is always welcome. If you have stories of paranormal experiences, you're welcome to uh, talk, contact me and we can arrange a day. Or, And of course, it's totally up to you all because obviously not everyone likes to uh, to talk on podcasts. So um, no worries either way. But um, so yeah, those articles are there in the channel to check out. and um, And then we can go from there. So... Let's see here. So yeah, next week uh, will be regular shows all the way from sun, uh, Sunday of this weekend through Thursday. And then um, on that Saturday, the 29th, is when the uh, extra show will happen and the special shows will start for that couple of days. So, looking forward to that weekend. And um, so yeah, I think I can I think that's everything for now. I will get to these articles here, and um, I actually have a couple that are related to um, ancient civilizations and mythology, which is, is neat. I haven't had any of those that I really felt like connected to the paranormal for a little while now, but um, I found these two today, and uh, I think they work. And um, this first one is from... Uh, ancient-origins.net great website, great articles from them even not, when they're not related to the paranormal um, and they are they are decent length articles you know sometimes we find websites that talk about things you're interested in but it's just one, one or two little paragraphs or one paragraph and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily but you don't, you don't have that, that problem with uh, the articles here from this site I have to say there's always just a ton there. And um, this article is, uh, the title is Celestial Siblings, Norse Sun and Moon Gods Chased Across the Sky. Now this one is different because apparently see, a lot of the other stories I've heard about the sun and the moon in terms of mythology and, and those kind of things at least it seems like some of the other stories I've heard, they're, they're cases where the sun and the moon are um, chasing each other. And that's part of what leads to the cycle of, um, of, the, of those two rising and, and setting. Um, but this one is different because they're chased by wolves. Um, but I just wanted to point out this article here because uh, it goes into a lot of detail about um, about the the origins of of the, their their gods there, and these are all 
Norse names, so I'm not going to try to to um to to go into them to the, to the t actual names. But uh, I just wanted to recommend this article here to check out, and um, and also I, I'm I, it just amazes me how much there is throughout time about um, the sun and the moon being uh, paranormal in, in in nature one way or another. And I think I may need to do a show or two shows, maybe one of each, on uh, the sun and the moon because um, they keep coming up. Of course, there's all the energy that the sun gives off, um, reports through, throughout the years of people seeing strange things n near or even going into or coming out of the sun. Um, and then, of course, there's a ton of mysteries about the moon and uh, as to what it is, how it got there, um, and uh, just the symbology in, in the sun and the moon that is just way too deep for me to get into right now. Um, but uh, it does seem like there have been, throughout time, there there have been, the different cultures around the world have explained the sun and the moon in different ways, and... Uh, this article talks a little bit about that, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to recommend that article and uh, and let you all check it out on your own. Um, I know I haven't really talked a lot about it, but uh, I feel like with these things, I'm better off just pointing you in that direction and then letting you go on your own. Um, I I've always liked the moon, um, maybe because it doesn't really bother my eyes so much as the sun does um but uh, i've always liked i've always liked the moon i always look out for the moon when i if i go outside at night i always look for it and um i don't know i think i have a connection to it somehow so and of course i always joke about the uh the the sun and because again light bothers my eyes so i was the joke is that um all that sun Terrible sun, evil sun, and that kind of thing. But it's mainly a joke, really, um, because we need both. So, um, so yeah, that's a neat article there to check out and go into more detail about that. So this next one here is about another thing that comes up in, throughout um, different cultures and mythologies and everything. This one is from egypttoday.com and uh, the title is How Ancient Eastern Civilizations Link Trees to Resurrection and um, so this is a, a, about um, the whole life and death and rebirth cycle in a way because of the way um, trees they seem to um they they go through that that cycle and, and and throughout the year because of the seasons and everything they um in, at least in some areas in some kinds of trees they uh they grow leaves uh, in the spring and then then eventually those leaves fall and the tree looks quite different and um and during the winter obviously and it's just a cycle of this so, I'm um, looking here through the article, mentions that trees always had a uh, connection with kings and shepherds. Um, says that there are carvings uh, that show depictions of trees back to the 4th millennium BC that have been discovered. Um, and that's that's even before the... the they say in this article here, the development of writing systems has existed. And uh, and then also it mentions water. And of course, water is something that comes up in a lot of paranormal things. Um, but again, the the way the water uh, is absorbed by the root, roots in the tree. And um, so, and then of course, um, let's see here. Looks like um, they're saying that these two together are really important in a lot of um, a lot of uh, cultures 
So here's something neat. It says that the uh, relationship between trees and water is the same as that between the shepherd and his livestock. Um, and it says that the shepherd is not different from the ruler who is responsible for his people. So then again, that's a, sort of the, the how they mentioned there already, uh, shepherds and kings. And um, and so the the uh, the water I'm guessing is what they mean is the water helps the trees grow. I'm guessing it doesn't really go into more detail there, but um, okay. So the mentions that the gods uh, chose the king to take care of his people um, in in their areas. <clears throat> Um, the way shepherds take care of cattle. Um, it's a, I guess I can understand the analogy, but uh, anyway. Um, so let's see here. Also, it mentions that tree because trees can uh, always renew every year, It's um, they're known as a symbol of the universe. And also, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that, that was right but also an expression of life and um, even immortality. So mentions here that the trees uh, are said to represent the um, spirits and the way they, they go, they transfer from one state to another. Um, so yeah, just a neat article there uh, talking about trees and, and their connection and their importance to to spiritual beliefs uh throughout time so neat article there as well so um moving from that we have a few articles here uh more in the uh haunted paranormal um type things yes true without the sun we wouldn't you wouldn't see the moon so um, but yeah, so these last three articles here are more in the paranormal haunted area kind of thing. Uh, this first one here is from <laughs> HiggyPop.com. Weird name, but they have a lot of good articles. Um, the title of this set is Dead End, England's Top 6 Road-Related Ghost Encounters. And this is a neat article. It talks about... Um, Reports on different roads around uh, around the UK talks about um, a couple of different cases of vanishing hitchhikers to an appearance of a 12 foot tall monk. That is amazing. Um, and so let me see here. Now I've shared some um, some tra traveling hitchhiker stories with you all before, so I'm going to do is go over the story about that uh that 12 foot um monk because that is just that is quite tall there's also reports of ghost pla planes and again i always wonder what that is because it's not living per se but it's still something um so yeah there's another that's another one of the um the the stories in this section here but uh, let me see here. I'm just scrolling through. And okay, so this one is um, this one is known as the Scatter Road Specter uh, in Humberside. And um, so this is the story about this twelve foot tall monk uh, going down the road. And uh, Apparently, this is an actual sighting that a woman had in ni 1999. And uh, so this um, they use a, a fake name that, of Katie and her mom were looking out of an upstairs window uh, when they, uh, they saw a figure um, going down the road. And... Uh, they watched what looked like a monk 
coming from their right. And the hood apparently stood up to a point, which is amazing. Um, and But they couldn't see the uh, his face at all because of the angle. But um, apparently he was appeared to be 12 foot tall. And um, and this was witnessed by both people. So um, that's amazing. And that just disappeared. And uh, it was so strange to them that they didn't talk about it with anyone. So I really wonder what that is. That's like a giant, a giant monk. Um, so, and there's... There's been other reports of that as well. Someone uh, else driving down that same road um, uh, apparently saw this figure and thought that he ran into, ran, ran into him, but then it was just gone, which is also a common thing that happens. So, um, neat article here about some other apparitions and traveling hitchhiker experiences, and uh, definitely check the rest of that article out. So this is one that came up the other day, I believe, this um, next location, the subject. This is from ksdk.com, and this one is um, Seven Gates of Hell r Rumored to uh, Transport Visitors to Underworld. Um, and this is the one that I mentioned the other day where I've heard of another one of these locations with that same, same name. In a different state. This is talking about one in Illinois. <clears throat> but um, there's one in Pennsylvania. I may have to look into that and maybe bring that up for a show sometime. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and this is, these legends, apparently it is mainly a legend. However, there's still reports of paranormal activity um, that happen in these areas. So regardless of whatever the legend is which is that if you go through these number of of gates, um, you will end up in a not so great place. Um, you will still have people still have experiences in these areas, and um, so let's see here. There have been reports of balls of light. Um, it even went into the to the creek bed, as one witness said, and then came back up. Um, this paranormal investigator uh, they, they're talking about here. Um, there are some darker aspects to the area in that there are remains of, of animals found in the area. But of course, that could be just nature. But it's odd if there's an uh, unusual number of these being found in the area. Um, and, uh, of course the legend draws people out there, and I wonder if that also, um, contributes to the paranormal activity. There's also reports of, um, people going out there to that area for occult reasons, um, for paranormal, for mystical, magical kind of ceremonial things, um, so, which also could contribute, if that is the case to paranormal activity. So, um, let's see here. And they mentioned that is it can be a dangerous area because people um, just speed down the roads in that area and it has led to um, accidents and even in one case a um, someone being killed by uh, in a car, deadly car crash and then after that, though, there's apparently this apparition seen in that same area of a figure, a uh, girl, wearing um, a, uh, a hoodie, it says, standing right there. So this, uh, this goes back to this question to me as to what, what comes first in these places. Is it the paranormal activity that leads to the legend, or is it the legends... Maybe someone has one single experience, which could be, and it, and it could be that that's all it was to begin with. But then once the, the word starts to get around, 
then um, that's that's what leads to more people focusing on the area and going to the area, and that could lead to more energy being um, transferred to it and maybe lead to more activity. So um, the article there goes into more detail about the uh, reports in the area. So I have one more article here. This goes back to, um, this is actually from, let's see here, uh, Real Estate US News, oh, Real Estate US News. And the title of this article is, Is Your House Haunted? And um, this talks about some signs of paranormal activity in people's homes and what, what you can do about it or what you maybe should or shouldn't do about it. Uh, we've gone over similar th topics, topics before, but um, they also talk about what what to do with the home if if it seems to be haunted as in, in terms of selling it. And this goes back into the whole um, topic that I've covered before of um, there seems to be an increase in in the desire or the um, from people who actually want to purchase homes that are said to have paranormal activity in them, not in every case, obviously, but in some, to the point where it's now in some areas, people will will share that and and intentionally um, to get more people interested in the place. Although I would guess it'd be a double-edged sword because then you'd be if you did that, you could be um, you could be driving off people as well because there's still that stigma in a lot of cases of if it's paranormal, excuse me, if it's paranormal, it has to be bad, and um, so just a neat article from a non-paranormal source here, non-paranormal related website, and uh, talking about um, about these things. So, and uh, let's see, that's it. That's all I have for today as far as stories go. Um, I'll be back on Sunday with True Paranormal Stories from the Web. And um, then Monday will be Paranormal News. Tuesday will be more True Paranormal Stories from the Web. Wednesday will be, normally I do a, a topic-based episode at the end of the month. Um, but because of the bonus episode that I'm doing next Saturday, and also because of the Michigan episode that Derek and I are doing on Halloween, I'm going to just do another uh, book review and um, get to some more Lovecraft stories. So um, to finish off the the month um, for Wednesday shows, and then of course Thursday will be more um, paranormal news. And uh, then we'll be, we will have arrived at Halloween weekend. So thank you all for listening. And I will talk to you all on Sunday on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care, everyone.